Shows like Ping Pong and the Tatami Galaxy have dominated critical acclaim since releasing. In fact, all of Masaki Yuasa's work have made their presence known since he emerged into the scene. He's one of my favourite practitioners in the industry right now, but what I find just as fascinating as his individual work is his work as an overall picture. Yuasa is an oddity, a unique exception to a normally tough and traditional industry. His works are certainly not very marketable and niche would be a pretty fair label to give them. And this is something very rarely seen at a consistent rate in the industry. Sure, there are many experimental projects out there, but normally they're funded by the same team's more commercial projects. Yuasa is unique in that he somehow finds funding over and over again despite having almost no guaranteed monetary return. This gives him opportunities to create things nobody else can do on a regular basis. It makes his career incredibly interesting to look through. Which makes me wonder why Yuasa is so unique in this sense. There are so many talented directors out there creating new, innovative anime, but almost none of them have achieved what Yuasa has. Similarly, revered directors have had considerably less roles in the last decade and definitely haven't maintained the same level of consistency. It seems to be a trend for current directors to have one or two impressive shows and then a noticeable dip, whether that be having to work on something a bit more safe or just generally not living up to their previous standards. Yasa on the other hand just seems to be rising, with his last few works being the most critically acclaimed, and certainly the best in my books. Not to mention the founding of Science Saru, his own anime studio. So what puts Yasa a step ahead of all these other directors? One of the main factors to Yasa's success is the amount of involvement he has in his projects. Before becoming a director, Yasa worked at a small studio called Ajaya Do, and things worked quite differently compared to other studios here. This was an instrumental point in Yasa's development as a director. At the time, he was an animator, but at the studio, nobody has just one role. Yuasa worked in almost every role at his time there, from animator to storyboarder to character designer to animation director, and this is a philosophy that Yuasa took with him and used when he became a director himself. Yuasa uses his diverse set of skills to help in almost every department of his anime. For example, in his recent series Ping Pong, Yuasa is credited with director, series composition, script writer, storyboard, and individual episode director. And that's a lot, and it's a testament to the solidity and consistency of his work. By doing this, Yuasa can use the resources given to him to their fullest, spreading his talents and creativity into every crevice of the project, pushing the potential of his projects further than most other creators can. Using little resources to create big things is where Yuasa strives, and his time working as an animator plays a big role in this. Animation is all about bringing a story to life. Having an idea in your head is one thing, but visualising that effectively is what separates the good from the great. And Yuasa's rich knowledge of animation has worked wonders in allowing this to happen. Unorthodox methods like his use of flash animation and ping pong give him the edge, and make him more appealing to studios. He does more with less, and that's such a valuable quality to have. So Yuasa has created an impressive number of titles, but what excites me more than the quantity is the diversity between each project. Almost every work is both visually and thematically its own entity. Each piece takes on new visual challenges and tackles fresh narrative content. And diversity is something Yuasa believes in a lot, and something instilled in his work right from his early animator days. The changes between his shows are so drastic as well, even in the small details, from Kaiba's dark, subtle sci-fi story with extreme simplicity in its visuals to the loud, colourful Tatami Galaxy, taking an episodic and comedic look on the troubles of young adulthood brushing its reach over a large amount of themes and topics, to then more serious ping pong with its less defined art style but more structured, traditional narrative. To achieve so greatly in so many different, contrasting areas is one of the reasons I hold Yuasa so highly, and possibly the reason he's so appealing to work with for other creators. And this constant switch between styles allows him to refine his skills in different areas. He's had a career that hasn't been limited to a single style or area, and it shows compared to other directors that are maybe stuck in one studio or to one type of show. One of the other most striking differences between Yuasa and other directors is the type of stories his shows tell. Firstly, his works are very complex. I rarely grasp the full understanding of his shows on the first or even the second watch. For example, some of the jokes in the Tatami Galaxy rely on knowledge of events that don't happen for another episode or two. He designs his stories in a way that forces you to explore them on your own to actively create your own individual experience. But there are a lot of complicated shows out there with spiralling narratives and layered metaphors, but what makes Yuasa's complexity so appealing is that it's built upon simplicity. The core of his works are always there in plain sight. Ping Pong is a story about reality, Tatami is a story about growing up, and that's very accessible. Yuasa offers his complexity through these basic initial ideas. 
They are accessible shows, but then they also offer a challenge. And this concrete basis that all his works are built upon offers solidity. A solidity that is very, very rare just now. I've never come out of a Yuasa show wondering what happens next, or hoping that there will be a season 2. Which ties back into his kind of denial of industry standards. Yuasa's works are always done when they're done. There's no shoehorn season 2 or sequel movie. There's never unwarranted spin-off. Yuasa creates his works as solid, self-contained pieces. Which, with the help of other aspects, comes to create possibly my favourite aspects of his stories. Timelessness. His works don't scream 2010 or 2008. Apart from the effect that the show itself had on that time, they're usually completely detached from trends and tropes. More so than any other current director, Yuasa creates works that are not part of their time. They don't fall out of trends or age with newly found tropes. Because Yuasa tends not to embrace current narrative tendencies, or maybe makes a conscious decision to go in the other direction, he becomes immune to the ageing that deteriorates so many other shows. They stand on their own as unique pieces of anime. With his uncommon work ethic, his resourcefulness, his diverse but solid style, Yuasa has created a handful of the medium's best recent works. And the way in which they're made, the way in which they break the rules is fascinating to watch. I personally think he's one of the industry's most unique practitioners, and it wouldn't be a long shot to say he's one of the most important. It's incredible what he's done already for the medium. And the best part about everything I've said is that Yuasa is still very much in his prime, and we could be seeing more very soon. But would you agree? Is Yuasa unique within the current industry? Please post your thoughts in the comments. Also, I'll be releasing a number of videos expanding on specific ideas brought up in this video and covering other aspects of Yuasa's anime, so be sure to stick around for that soon. And please do make a point of clicking the like button or sharing it around if you enjoyed the video. But that's all for this one, cheers.